All right, we're gonna take a little closer look at um, the conditions under which you can be sure that the waves are gonna um, add together and make constructive interference. For example, loud sound, bright light, tall water waves versus conditions when the um, wave sources are gonna conspire to make either quietness, uh, smooth water, or darkness if it's light waves, okay? Um, so first let's look at the case of what's called constructive interference where the, um, where again you get loudness or um, tall water waves or bright light, right? So the idea here is, again, we're, we're looking at um, interference between two wave sources and uh, so here's one wave source and, I, and another wave source, and I happen to just pick this location in space. I could have picked other places around, and what we're trying to do is learn you know, why it would be at a certain place, why you would have loud sound or quiet sound, okay? So, um, so we're gonna begin with the case of what's called constructive interference, where it's gonna be like loud. So the key thing to look at here um, is something called a path difference, okay? So what you do, is you, you look at the first one of the wave sources, so here's source one, and here is what, what is gonna be called path one. This distance, um, so we'll call this path one. Well, how far is path one? Uh, one way to measure how far it is is to see how many wavelengths fit in there. Okay, so we happen to be like at a peak right now, the way that I drew this. So if you just kind of count peaks, it goes uh, one, two, three. So this, I happen to choose a point where this, this wave happens to be peaking, like right now at this point. So the distance here is three wavelengths. Just be careful how you count. Don't start with one here, because right, like when you're born, you're not one, you gotta wait a year. So right, one, two, three. So, the, so path one is three wavelengths long, okay? Um, so now let's look at the other path. Of course, so creative, I'm gonna call this one path two. Um, so here's path two. Right? And if we just play the same game here, so here's path two. And path two, you can tell, is one, two, three. I made it exactly four wavelengths. So path two equals four lambda. Right? Now what's happening at this instant, right at this instant, the peaks are arriving at, at this instant. But if we wait just a little bit after this, this valley will move to that point, and this valley will move to that point. So the valleys will also arrive at the same time. So being loud is not just about peaks arriving, but you also need, say, the valleys to arrive at the same time. So the waves are doing the same thing at the same time at this place, okay? Um, one thing to notice about this is if, if I were to move this speaker closer up to here so that this was three and that was three, that would also be, they would also be arriving in phase and it would continue to be loud, okay? So we'll come back to that point in a second. So what's key here is you notice the path, what's called the path difference. This is the most important thing on this whole, this whole unit, honestly. So the path difference, which I'm gonna call delta path, okay? And it's really just path two minus path one. Okay, it's, it is, the path difference is how much farther did one wave have to go than the other? That's the most plain English way to say it. Um, well, also path two minus path one is gonna be four lambda minus three lambda. Um, so it turns out it's just one lambda. So the path difference is exactly one wavelength and it's gonna be loud. Okay, so for loud sound. Now the thing to imagine here is suppose I could move the speaker. Well, if I kept the speaker kind of like on an arc around here and I kept it always four lambda from this point, it would continue to be loud if I swung it around in an arc because all that really matters is this path difference, okay? Um, so it's helpful if you can imagine other places where it would be loud, right? So we, we kind of mentioned or I hinted that if you just slid this thing up one full wavelength, that would be loud. Notice I could, uh, right, if it was here, then the path difference would be zero because this one would go three and that would go three. Okay, so, so zero wavelengths also seems to work, okay? Another thing you might imagine is if I just move this one back exactly one wavelength where this one was going five and that one was going three. So, uh, and then that would give a path difference of two wavelengths. So ultimately what we lead up to is if the path difference is either zero, one wavelength, two wavelengths, three wavelengths. So the way to capture this in general is delta path 
equals n lambda, where this guy can be 0, 1, 2, 3, or anything else that's an integer like that. Um, this is very important. This is then the condition, so it's worth a box and some stars. This is for constructive interference. So what's key is the path difference. So something I didn't draw here because it would be like slightly harder to draw, but say if, if it would have been the case that this were 3.25 and this were 4.25, it would still be loud because the difference between 4.25 and 3.25 would be one. So, you, so if the path difference is an integer number of, of wavelengths, um, it's gonna be loud. Now when kids see this, they're usually like, well, how do I know which, which one it is? Um, the answer is it's all of them. At, at, at locations that have a path difference of zero, at all of those locations, it's loud. At locations that have a path difference of one it, wavelength, it's also loud. Um, so that's something to keep in mind with this. All right. So let's just quickly look at the case of the other case where you actually have um, destructive interference, Okay, where you can ensure that the waves are gonna perfectly cancel each other. Um, so if you look at the picture below, we're gonna play the exact same game, okay? This top wave, this top path is one, two, three lambda again. So we can say path one equals three lambda, okay? Now you notice this bottom path, well let's count. Here you start at zero and then you go one, two, three, and then you can see that we do a half cycle, okay? So this path here is path two is gonna be three and a half wavelengths, 3.5 lambda, okay? So um, the key here is since this one has gone the extra half wavelength, this wave is like valleying while this one is peaking, okay? And so these guys are gonna conspire to, to punch each other out, right? Then a short time later, when the peak of this bottom wave arrives, that's right when the valley of the top wave will arrive. So what's gonna happen is if your eardrum was here, these waves are gonna conspire to make the, the air pressure stay flat, okay? The air pressure is not gonna wiggle between high and low because every time this wave, the bottom wave wants it to be high, the top wave wants it to be low and vice versa. Um, okay, so it's gonna be dead quiet there, okay? And so what you can see here is your path difference. So here your delta path, which again is uh, path two minus path one. I'm gonna to try to stop writing so messy. In fact, I'm gonna fix that for quality control here. Let's redo that a little better. Delta path, which is path two minus path one. Okay, you can see that that's gonna be three and a half lambda minus three lambda. So that's exactly half a wavelength, 0 0.5 lambda, right? Uh, that is gonna give you a quiet sound, okay? Or destructive interference quiet. Um, now just like we did before, you might imagine that, well, if I, if I moved this up exactly a wavelength, then this would be two and a half and that would be three. The difference would still be half a wavelength, so it's still going to be quiet. So if I moved this up exactly a wavelength, it'd be dead quiet. I can also go back so that this would be four and a half and that would be three, then the difference is one and a half. That's also going to be quiet. And so in all its glory then, we can generalize this to all the places where it's gonna be quiet. Um, so it would be like, if the path difference is half a wavelength, one and a half, two and a half, three and a half. So one convenient way to write that is you can say delta path equals, well, I'm gonna write it two ways. One way to do it is you can say if the delta path is half a wavelength, or three and a half wavelengths, or five half wavelengths, comma dot, 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 the way that this tends to be written, um, I don't know, maybe more concisely, is like this. You say delta path is n plus one half lambda, where again, in, and then the n retains the same meaning as it had up above, where it can basically be any integer. Zero, one, two, comma, dot, dot, dot. All right, see if you plug it in. n equals zero, you get that one. n equals one, you get that one, and it builds them all up. This is also worthy of a box and some stars, because this is the condition for destructive interference or quiet sound. So very, very important. Most important thing in this unit, okay? 
for destructive interference. Um, again, kids might get hung up on, well, how do I know which one it is? It's not which one, it's all of them. All of them, there are a whole bunch of places where you could put the speaker to conspire to make it um, uh, quiet at that place. Now, what we did was looked at the extremes. There are places where you can completely uh, cancel the sound, and there's places where they perfectly add together. Um, there's a whole continuum in between there. Like, you could have it where it almost cancels. So, for example, if the path difference was, instead of getting exactly 0.5 wavelengths, if we got 0.498 wavelengths, then it would, like, almost cancel. Right? It would, uh, then it would be like pretty quiet there, um, but it wouldn't quite cancel out. So what we did was we fixated on the extremes, okay? Um, so um, final point I want to make, I can't stress enough the importance of what path difference is. I'm gonna actually hassle you guys about this a lot to make sure you have it. The most plain English definition of path difference I can think of, okay, so which we're gonna call delta path, and I'm gonna bother to write it down here. It is it is how much farther one wave has to go than the other. That's what the path difference is. One wave must go than the other. So if you ever want to know, if you have two sources of waves, whether it's going to be bright or dark or in between or loud or quiet or in between, um, what you want to do is focus on this path difference. That concept is key. You find one path, you find the other, you take the difference. If it's an integer number of wavelengths, it's going to be loud or bright. If it's a uh, one half, three halves, five halves uh, um, number of wavelengths, um, then you're going to have perfect cancellation of the waves. Um, so really, really important page for this unit.